to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. And I'm here with Fear. For those that don't know you guys, please introduce yourselves. <laughs> hey, are you there? Yo. <laughs> My name's Lee Ving. I'm the band leader of Fear. And uh, you're a humble servant. <laughs> Shall we proceed? Yes. For all of yous, with a capital S. I'm Spit. I think I'm the drummer uh, of Fear. Yeah, when I look check my ID and I got an armband so that proves it <laughs> amen I'm so happy to see you guys our last interview was over three years ago at Musing pre-pandemic um, I've run into you guys quite a bit since mostly mostly you Lee you're quite the quite the party boy out and about in Hollywood Thank you. <laughs> um, so let's talk about what you guys have been up to last I saw you guys um, was in Dallas you opened for the Misfits can we talk about that show sure yeah, it was nice. Uh, it was nice to just hang with those guys when they're just on the DL and just normal people, not behind their security onslaught. So it's nice. That particular show is nice, but it was cool. It was, had some uh, giant booming problems, and but it was nice. We we got a bunch of people. Promoters came back and said they were happy about. They've never had that big of a turnout for an opening band, so it made yeah. us feel good. Like I guess we're doing something good. Yeah. Now, it's always great to play in the great state of Texas. <laughs> yes, sir, <E>. Bob. <laughs> God bless the yeah. USA. God bless the USA. What is it? What is it? No, 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 no. You have a lot going on um, this year. You've got a lot of releases coming out, and from speaking to your manager, one of those was around getting the rights back um, to your original album from Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, yeah, you got the rights back, so you re-released that one. Yes, indeed. Can you talk about that process of how was it getting your <laughs> getting the rights it back? A, it's not easy to do. Yes, uh, it was uh, little or nothing to do other than the contractual. Uh, information and uh, the whole process took care of itself it's now back where it belongs ownership into the creators and look out here it comes <laughs> Awesome. So how does that work? I mean, with the contractual stuff, was there an expiration date on it? Or how is, how, I mean, obviously. We I had a little window they gave us. They said, you have to f do contracts to get ownership back within this window. Otherwise, the window closes. So we kind of were pressed to, to get our legal stuff together and make sure our dots and T's were crossed. And so we did it. We did it with. Within now, and we have now the benefit of remastering it, which it had never been remastered, or remixing it if we want. But it's just nice to remaster and press fresh vinyl for all those people that have had it for over 40 years. It hardly plays, you know, so for them to get a fresh remastered copy, people are thrilled. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it's all good, and it's back in the ownership of them what created it, so it's right where it belongs, and we're re real happy about it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
You do actually have a single coming out in January with Duff and Slash from Guns N' Roses, correct? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, 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 yes, indeed. So how was it working together? Because I remember our first interview was at Musink three years ago, and I remember seeing Duff backstage, and he was wearing like a fear shirt and was so excited. He's been a fan of yours for a while. Oh, Guns N' Roses covered a song. Duff. How you doing, Duff? There's, here's one coming out to you, brother. So how was it working together with with them on this new single? It was an honor. It was, an honor uh, it was a little faster than he was used to playing it, <laughs> but uh, he dug it, and uh, it was nice to have them, you know, put their little two cents in too. It was just a, it was a, it was an honor. Yes, indeed, we had a good time, and and uh, hopefully it will be very successful. I think it will be. And you've got a lot of other big players on this new record you have coming out. You have a new record coming out in May. Yes, that's true. And then what? We've, there's Shooter Jennings. Somebody from Green Day is on it. Yes. I talked to Shooter the other day. It's an honor. And uh, I love all kinds of music. And country is among my favorites. And I've always been a big fan of Shooter's dad and, and now Shooter. It, the talent runs in the family, that's for sure. Share some stories from working together in the studio with all of these artists. I know that there's been some sneak previews shared on your social medias, but can you give me the scoop? How was it? Right, the, <laughs> our our sessions are. It's not party time. It's time to get in there and, and knuckle down and take care of brass tacks, get the things finished and uh, on vinyl that we want to have, and so that like uh, something you may have read in Rolling Stone about some band or other back in the day of doing all kinds of time-wasting activities in the studio, that's not us. We are down to business. We want to get in there and take care of business, get it on the record, and party times later. Yeah. I mean, time is money when you're in the studio. Amen. <laughs> Jeff and Eric do their homework, uh, as I, and so we go in there well-oiled, and it's so nice because we work together day to day and just be able to put that, that marriage down on tape is such a such a pleasure to to hear back and hear the work that we do live and in rehearsals actually memorialize so yeah we're, we're, we're digging it and our band is is uh honored to have jeff tylander and eric razo jeff on bass and eric razo on guitar and uh we feel like we have the bases covered at this point and just looking forward to more and more shows and more and more recordings yes sir ladies and gentlemen line up Get your parking space quick before it sells out. Well, both of you have actually a long career working in entertainment outside of the band Fear. Um, Tim, for you, you've you you actually produced um, Red Hot Chili Peppers' first demos, which got them signed. Yeah, and I I still love doing that. I still love recording and producing. I have a studio at home that I if I make money, that's fine. If I don't, it's just one of those labor of loves that I've done since I was probably 17, 18. Yeah. And here's one for you, Flea. How you doing, brother? <laughs> <laughs> and then you've had a long career, too, as an actor as well, right? Yes, yes, indeed. It's It's been... Uh, a great opportunity that I was pleased to have and and wanted to take advantage of and uh, clue and flash dance and 
at Al. Those Smart. Streets of Fire were all all great opportunities, and we just had a great time doing it. So, okay. no uh, no downside to it. That's for sure. Yeah, I think I think that really comes off. Even though, despite you guys being a punk band. You know, I've seen you say in other interviews that you always wanted to have talented musicians, which is why you went for jazz musicians. Both of you kind of have a background in jazz. That's true. So how is that for you? I mean, you know, being a punk band and, and the types of songs that you sing, songs about, about beer. Well, <laughs> we figured if we crammed enough notes into a short enough space and played it fast enough, it'd be really hard for anybody who don't know what the hell they're doing to keep up with. And that's that's amusing enough for us. Yes, sir, Bob. I just think. What does even want to do, Bob? I just think it's funny because the two of you, you know come from a really solid background you're educated and then the fan base of your shows is like everyone is just drunk as fuck like just slobbered all i mean fear shows are really fun but i just think that you know that dynamic is really funny yeah. i think we encourage it it's like it's of course any venue is going to sell a lot of alcohol but we actually like beer and so it was easy to advertise because <laughs> something actually that I could understand how the end user feels. Yeah. And you guys actually, too, you have two fear beers now. Yeah. The the current one is so good. I had like three the other night at the record thing. It was, and they were, normally I'd try a beer like, okay, I'll try it to be nice. But I was like, I'm going to have more. <laughs> so it's really good, actually. It's an honor to have our band name used for our favorite beverage. <laughs> Amen. So how was that making the beer? Did you guys play an active role in it or was it? Y yes, we're being told off camera that yes, you did. <laughs> yes. We yes, had, we the had, answer we is yes. We had lots to do with it. Testing each of the beers to make sure they were exactly right and flagging any that weren't. Of course, there were none of those. <laughs> and uh, just trying to make sure that there was always more beer, more beer. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing out there anyway? What are you doing? Are you having a beer? All right, good for you. It better be Fierce Beer. Where can people buy Fierce Beer? Same place they can buy any of the other ones. <laughs> you know, Budweiser, Miller, and Fear Beer all in one breath. Okay. So I do want to talk about the last time we did an interview. You've had some member lineup changes. Like, how did the current lineup come together? Can we talk about that? Yes. Well, we had, like, many people on stage at first. There was Philo was playing with us. Then we had Dave and Paul and Andrew, who were please backup band for a long time. And then Philo and I came into it, and it just seemed kind of like a no-brainer. It's like, rather than doing half a set, we should just do the whole set. So it was... We were trading you, off for a you while. You and Philo were, were in there on ground level, man. Well, the band hadn't been around even that long when uh, you and Philo were in the band. No, I, she's talking about um, 2018 when right. Philo and I came back into the band, what what that transition was. Right. And so that it was a natural transition. And because we had had so much experience prior to, mm -hmm. and it was it was very, very natural, very welcome. And uh, this this is the band. This This is the one that that is and that should have been and that will be amen amen i say unto you that it's kept the two of you playing together for so long the love of music the dead and the love of playing this stuff that's crazy and fast 
and uh, you know maybe one song's difficult here and there and not to blow our own horn but we're into it you know if you're going to have trouble stealing our songs then it's exactly right for sure so let's talk about you have a documentary coming out soon we, as we well. do we do so how has that been filming for that how long have they been filming it what's the film they followed us around camera crew follows around to a bunch of festivals and did some you know private interview stuff so we've been working on it for a little bit, but they just kind of tag team, tagged around with us for a bunch of shows and just ask a billion questions of Lee and I separately and just to get different point of views on the same experience. But it was cool. It was, it was, I mean, of course, we've told these same stories to people for decades, but uh, it was nice to encapsulate them and uh, in a way we And swallow them. And swallow as well. <laughs> Encapsulate it, you know, what we couldn't resist. Can you share one of your favorite stories that you've shared for the documentary with me? Can you share just one? Sure. <laughs> Let's see, I remember one where uh, we were coming back from San Francisco, and we had a rental van, and we were drinking, all of us were drinking beers, and of course we don't know, uh, open containers in the van, so we'd open the cargo door, pull in the far right lane, and heave our bottles out onto the shoulder, so we had no uh, bottles in the car. So we'd throw our bottles out, and I shut the door, and I'm in the passenger seat. Flea is like kind of in between the driver. I think Lee was driving and, and uh, wasn't drinking and driving, or maybe he was, but, <laughs> but in either case, I just remember turning around and, and Lee made Flea laugh so hard that he was eating peanuts and he's laughing so hard the peanuts and beer are coming out of his nose. <laughs> you know you told a good joke when that happens. <laughs> And one year we were fortunate enough to be friend John Belushi, may he rest in peace. And things being what they were at the time, he was instrumental in having us be invited to play on Saturday Night Live. Although the brass at Saturday Night Live were unaware of who we were or what we were or what we played. And so he also invited all of all of the people who were interested in punk rock or who played it from Washington, D.C. to come and be part of the audience for the show. So we played our first two songs and got away with that, as the musical artists on the show do. And then we got a chance to play the second two songs, and John helped invite all of the kids that were there that day up onto the stage to help slam ourselves around and throw stuff and just be normal, natural punk rock audience. But that included hitting some of the people that worked on the show and, and uh, 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 executives of the program getting hit with the pumpkins. And before you know it, everybody was that, that has say over what happens on the show were appalled at all this activity on the stage for which they had no prior knowledge and weren't warned. And uh, all of a sudden the camera cuts to John Belushi and he looks at the camera who had, I think, just been in negotiation with them for a raise, and they turned him down. So John looked at the camera for getting us on the show and went like this. He got his revenge. John won. May he rest in peace. God bless you. We love you, John. Yeah, I would say that's probably one of the things that fear is most known for, your iconic SNL performance. Uh, and it was an <laughs> enjoyable night. Great to play for the American population as we should have righteously had that opportunity. And we were very happy about it. And thank you, John, for arranging it. And then, Tim, you actually played, I saw on your Wikipedia page that you played drums for him. Is that? Or is I did. John and, John and I hung out for several weeks, and I was producing his personal stuff in the studio. 
And he's 82. He's paying me 500 bucks a day <laughs> to basically produce him. And it was just his personal stuff. And that one of those things turned into uh, a song that that Lee and the mainly Lee and the rest of us wrote. The neighbors and, and that's the thing we ended up working neighbors. on the most. But uh, yeah, John was super generous, selfless genius. He was just he just wanted to be around musicians. Not he was not pedestalized. He just just wanted to be normal and hang out. And that's yep. and a great guy, a great no guy. Yeah. Here's to you, John. So it's just a lot of conditions. So that period of time meeting John, just being in our career, we'd done. Uh, the decline. So we were kind of just on the rise. Then we did Saturday Night Live, and on Wednesday is when you start rehearsal. And back in those days, it wasn't LED; it was can lights. So if, and it was Halloween. So of course, all the pumpkins are cooking. <laughs> so it's perfect conditions for when those. One of the kids got picked thrown. up the pumpkin and threw it at Dick Ebersol, and it smashed all over his chest. <laughs> and that's when John came on the camera and said, <laughs> <laughs> "John got his revenge." God bless him. May he rest in peace. We got to go play. Sorry, folks, but it was all the time we have. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for interviewing us, yes. our beautiful interviewer. God bless her. And uh, off we go. See you soon. Coming to a town or a hall near you. Be there or be square. Hi, folks. I'm leaving. This is Spit Sticks. We're fear. You're watching Last Rockers TV. What are they? What are they? Yeah!